Hello, and welcome to Corby's Book Club, where I tell you about books that I've read that I think you might enjoy. She was a book nerd, she had blonde hair. The book club's been going on for a couple years now, long enough that I'm starting to get some of the recommendations fans of the show have sent me. Anytime you suggest a book, I add it to an ever-expanding list of wordy delights. Who knows what alchemy leads me to read one book and not the other, but whatever the impulse, it's what led me to this one. A Gentleman in Moscow was written by Amor Tolls and published in 2016 to rave reviews. It was on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 40 weeks and received wide critical praise and made several best books of the year lists. Set in Moscow, the story begins in 1917 when the hero, Count Rostov, is arrested in the wake of the Bolshevik Revolution and charged as a social parasite. He's charmingly unrepentant and, perhaps because of a certain poem he's attributed to have written, is spared execution. Instead, he's condemned to house arrest in the hotel where he's been living, the metropole in the heart of downtown Moscow. A cultivated person, Rostov adopts the advice of his late grandfather that a man must master his circumstances or be mastered by them. Lest the main theme of the novel be lost on ye dear reader, this passage is recalled and repeated throughout the book, and it would not be too much to say that the protagonist's chief appeal lay in his embrace and acceptance of his would-be diminished circumstances. There he is, a former count, living in an attic, still reading his Pushkin, still getting weekly haircuts, still in engaging in the ritualized pleasures of civilized life. The late morning coffee, the evening snifter of brandy, the spot of conversation over tea. A story set in a world-famous hotel provides plenty of opportunity for new characters to appear and withdraw. Time and again, Count Rostov comes up against some trial, small or large, be it a derisive and jealous co-worker, an intrusion from a suspicious authority, or the sudden appearance of a child dependent. And by a combination of wit, sympathy, and charm, he makes the circumstance his own. I'm going to use the word charm again because that's what this story turns on and what shines brightest in it. Rostov is a man of the world, almost always composed, deferential, exquisitely polite, and fundamentally warm-hearted, even toward his detractors. The narrative language is itself an extension of the Count's own voice, which is to say it feels almost like a long story told across the table at dinner. Each of the characters is presented, with one exception, in a sympathetic light, and in that way there's something of Tolstoy in Tol's own tale. Now I'm going to say something critical. Unlike Tolstoy, the characters in A Gentleman in Moscow often fall short of the truly three-dimensional. This is going to be unpopular because people love this book, but there's something stage-like in the whole story, maybe even Disney-ish. Traditional Russian novels are great because they dare to look where lesser minds don't. The Russian writer pokes its characters until they do something stupid or ugly and then forgives them. It's that probing for the depths of human weakness which causes such a strong identification between the reader and, say, Tolstoy's Anna Karenina or Dostoevsky's Raskolnikov. The very American author who wrote A Gentleman in Moscow is content to keep the uglier side of human nature out of sight. The action always occurs in a flattering light, the dialogue is never not witty, but like any clever repartee, the language masks as much as it reveals. That said, A Gentleman in Moscow is a heartwarming story told with beautiful language and populated with charming if slightly sentimental characters. A lot of people really love this book. I liked it. Maybe you should read it. That's all the time we have for Corby's Book Club. Let me know what I should check out next. Take a second to hit the subscribe button and remember, music keeps you young, but reading keeps you sharp. See you next time. She was a book nerd. She had blonde hair with a baby.